Mr. Trump, there is an influential community of evangelicals there in Indiana, known as a deep conservative state. And Rafael Cruz, who is the father of Ted Cruz, is really reaching out to that crowd and saying, I implore every member of the body of Christ to vote for my son. I think we have a soundbite of that. I want to listen to this and then get your reaction. I implore, I exhort every member of the body of Christ to vote according to the word of God and vote for the candidate that stands on the word of God and on the Constitution of the United States of America. And I am convinced that man is my son, Ted Cruz. Does that resonate with the folks there in Indiana? I think it's a disgrace that he's allowed to do it. I think it's a disgrace that he's allowed to say it. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I think the media is among the most dishonest groups of people I've ever met. And believe me, if I become president, oh, do they have problems. They're going to have such problems. And one of the things I'm going to do, and this is only going to make it tougher for me, and I've never said this before. But one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to open up our libel laws so when they write purposely negative and horrible and false articles, we can sue them and win lots of money. We're going to open up those libel laws. His father was with Lee Harvey Oswald prior to Oswald's being, uh, you know, shot. I mean, the whole thing is ridiculous. What, what, what is this right prior to his being shot? And nobody even brings it up. I mean, they don't even talk about that. That was reported, uh, and nobody talks about it. But I think it's horrible. I think it's absolutely horrible that a man can go and do that, what he's saying there. Right. There was a picture out there that reportedly shows um, uh, Raphael Cruz standing with Lee Harvey Oswald. I mean, what, I was, he doing with, with, what um, was he doing with Lee Harvey Oswald right. shortly before the death, uh, before the shooting? It's, it's horrible. bring up Senator Cruz's father and Lee Harvey Oswald. Are you aware of any single piece of evidence that backs up the claims that you talked about? Well, let me just tell you how it started. His father said some really terrible things about me and said pray and pray, you know, in a very bad sense about me, like nobody's ever said anything like so that. So you swung and back. he said it to him, and it was on tape. And your friends at Fox and Friends played it. I implore, I exhort every member of the body of Christ to vote according to the Word of God and vote for the candidate that stands on the Word of God and on the Constitution of the United States of America. And I am convinced that man is my son, Ted Cruz. And Steve and Brian, the group, they played it. And I must tell you, uh, I was shocked to see it. I didn't see it until then. And they say, what do you have to So I said, I think it's a very nasty thing. It was a very nasty thing to say. So it wasn't just, didn't come out of nowhere. Sure. <laughs> You don't really believe that Ted I Cruz's father had anything to do with the assassination of President Kennedy? No, I don't. Donald Trump went on national television and attacked my father. Donald Trump alleges that my dad was involved in assassinating JFK. Now, let's be clear. This is nuts. This is not a reasonable position. This is just kooky. And while I'm at it, I guess I should go ahead and admit, yes, my dad killed JFK. He is secretly Elvis, and, J and Jimmy Hoffa is buried in his backyard. I'm going to do something I haven't done for the entire campaign, for those of y'all who have traveled with me. 
all across the country. I'm going to tell you what I really think of Donald Trump. This man is a pathological liar. He doesn't know the difference between truth and lies. He lies practically every word that comes out of his mouth. And in a pattern that I think is straight out of a psychology textbook, his response is to accuse everybody else of lying. He accuses everybody on that debate stage of lying. And it's simply a mindless yell. Whatever he does, he accuses everyone else of doing. He got out of the race. So you think it. their decision has to do with Jeb Bush? Of course it does. I mean, it does there, and I criticize his decision to go into Iraq. Now, on that, I just want to clear that up. I, you've come up with articles, but there's audio of you before no, the war. No, there isn't. No, there isn't. Uh, are you for invading Iraq? Yeah, I guess so. Uh, that include. I have not heard it. It includes an audio clip of what appears to be you on Howard Stern talking on the radio on September 11th, 2002, he asked you, are you for invading Iraq? You said, yeah, I guess so. You know, I wish the first time it was done correctly. Is that accurate? Do you remember saying that? No, but I mean, I could, I could have. He says, no, that was long before the war began, and by the time the war began, I was saying, and I'm on the record as saying that we shouldn't not go in. true. Which is not true. So George Stephanopoulos cuts in and says, but you're not on record at all opposing the war before it began. There's simply no evidence of that, sir. Trump responds, well, there is evidence, and I'll find evidence, because I was against the war, and you can say the way I said it, that was long before the war started, and that was an interview, that was the first time I was ever actually asked that question. <laughs> it may have been the worst decision ever made by a president in history to invade. You said that it's a tremendous military success. No, I, what I said, what I said is it was a success because they thought it was a success, but before that I said they shouldn't go in. And then all during, for many years, I said this war is a huge mistake. In fact, in 2003, 2004, they did an article, a big article in one of the magazines, and Reuters did an article where I'm very critical of the war. Get out, it's a mistake. Before point is this man is a pathological liar. He doesn't know the difference between truth and lies. He lies practically every word that comes out of his mouth. Today, you've just announced your national finance chairman. Right. Uh, and he's an investor, a former partner of Goldman Sachs. Right. Congressman Chris Collins from New York endorsed you. He's a member of your congressional leadership yes. team. Uh, you know, he's against mass deportation of illegal immigrants. He's against a temporary ban on Muslims. Um, he says that when you become the nominee, and then his idea when you become president, that you are going to be more nuanced than you are on the trail. What do you say to that? Well, we're going to see. I mean, I have to see. Look, everything, honestly, is going to be up, and we have to negotiate. We have Congress. So you're open to, to with, moving from We have from to deal places. with a lot of people. I mean, you know, I can't just take executive orders like Obama. And somebody was saying my tax plan is uh, very, very steep. I mean, I have the biggest tax plan. But, you know, I'm not the one that does the tax plan. It's me and lots of congressmen and lots of senators and lots of everything. So I would say that uh, certain things will be changed. Certain things will be stayed exactly the same. But, you know, there is a negotiation back and forth. I mean, I'm somebody that would like not to sign too many executive orders. That wasn't what our founders had in mind, sitting down and signing executive order. Chris Collins is a fantastic guy, by the way, a fantastic guy. But I'm very strong on illegal immigration, and that will never change. Now, that doesn't mean that in terms of implementation, we don't make it. We have to do 
what I say we have to do. Now, with that under, you know, with that understanding, there will be negotiation, Brett, because I'm not a dictator. I'm being elected president, hopefully, because I'm going to make America great again. But we're going to have to negotiate with lots of people, including Republicans. The man ca cannot tell the truth, but he combines it with being a narcissist. A narcissist at a level I don't think this country's ever seen. Donald Trump is such a narcissist that Barack Obama looks at him and goes, Dude, what's your problem? Everything in Donald's world is about Donald. And he combines being a pathological liar. And I say pathological because I actually think Donald, if you hooked him up to a lie detector test, he could say one thing in the morning, one thing at noon, and one thing in the evening, all contradictory, and he'd pass the lie detector test each time. Whatever lie he's telling, at that minute, he believes it. But the man is utterly amoral. Well, Senator, and, 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 let, let me finish this, please. The man is utterly amoral. It, morality does not exist for him. And listen, Donald Trump is a serial philanderer, and he boasts about it. This is not a secret. He's proud of being a serial philanderer. I want everyone to think about your teenage kids. The President of the United States talks about how great it is to commit adultery, how proud he is. Describes his battles with venereal disease as his own personal Vietnam. That's a quote, by the way, on the Howard Stern show. Do you want to spend the next five years with your kids bragging about infidelity? Now, they wanted money from me, and then when I said no, they went out and started a negative ad campaign, and they're up now in Indiana. And the answer lies, and, and it is just disgraceful.